Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for being on time. And today, uh, we just want to welcome you into His presence and His house. Uh, welcome to Sokabili. Welcome to... Uh, Welcome to uh, service and let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that Lord, you are moving in our midst, you are moving in our lives, you are, you are moving in our hearts and, and you are doing a, a great work in the midst of us. And even right now, God, Lord, we open our hearts to you. We open our hearts to your voice. We open our hearts to, to your move and your work within us and around us. Lord, we say that you are high and lifted up, that you, you are moving so mightily, so mightily, causing situations to reverse for us. And, and so we set our hope in you. We set our hope in you. And we allow your love to overwhelm us, to flush away every sense of overwhelm in our lives. That no matter how overwhelming situations are, your love overwhelms and overcomes. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, how He loves us. 
our prize drawn to redemption by grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all sinking heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss heart is violent inside of my chest I don't have the time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. He loves. How he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us how he loves us so and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
I see your eyes gazing over me. Eyes of the Father gazing upon me. Ooh, I hear you, voice. You call.
rushing now. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. Jesus has given me, you are my champion, you are my champion, giants for when you stand undefeated, every battle you won, you crown me with confidence. has given me when I lift my voice miracles that's breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me when I lift my voice and shout Crashing now, I have the authority. Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth, miracles just breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. You are my champion, giants for when you stand undefeated, every battle you won, I am who you say I am, you crown me with confidence, I'm seated. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the authority that you have given us. You say that all authority has given unto has been given unto you. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that as we come under your authority, that we have access to your authority. And so we aligned ourselves under your authority even right now. And we allow your voice to resound in your, our hearts and your words to come and, 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 and speak destiny and identity into our hearts right now. Thank you, Lord, that our identities are shaped by by your word that even as you as you say to uh, to Jesus this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased let your voice resound in our hearts even right now that as your voice resound in our hearts that your heart will begin to resound 
through our voices that every word we speak begin to carry your heart and your voice to begin to carry your passion and your authority. So even right now, we declare that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. That we declare that you have called us to be more than Christ, more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who loves us. That Father God, we declare that we are overcomers of the world, overcomers of every situation that we overcome by the faith and by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. That Father God, we declare that in you, we are brand new creation. The old has passed, the new has come. That Father, we declare that you've given us a new heart, not a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh. That you've written your words, your law, in our hearts. Father, we declare that we are yours and you are ours. That, that you call us by name, that you walk us through the fire and the waters. that we declare that we carry your dreams and we carry your voice and we carry your destiny upon our lives. That you have given us a hope and a future that your thoughts towards us is for good, not for evil. that your thoughts towards us are many, more than the, 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 the sand of the sea and the stars in the sky. And so, we, Lord, we receive your grace as we align with your heart. in every house, in every heart, we allow you to move. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. and I are called to be like eagles to soar to run and not be weary to walk and not faint as wait on Him as as we hope in Him Isaiah 40 31 as we hope in Him wait on Him that strength will come into our lives that we have a vision of an eagle. A vision sees far, and a, uh, an eagle sees far, and the eagle sees straight. That, that his eyes only see with, with a single direction. An eagle's eyes do not look to the right, do not look to the left. An eagle's eyes do not have peripheral vision, but he sees straight and he sees far. And so, so, as we hope in Him that we soar with Him. So as we sing the next song, we are declaring our identity in, in Him. We, we are declaring our life in Him. We are declaring His goodness in us. I am strong. 
strong, full of life. I am steadfast, no compromise. I let myself to the skies. Gonna catch a win, catch a win, catch a win of the spirit. I am bold, no fear inside. Spread my wings, open my life. Like an eagle who sobers the sky, gonna catch you in, gonna catch you in. Your faithfulness will never let me down. I'm confident I'll see you again. I know my, you hear my heart I'm saying now. There's nothing that can stop your goodness now. I am strong for I am steadfast, no compromise. Let my sails to the sky. I'm gonna catch you in, gonna catch you in. I am bold, no fear inside. Spread my wings, open my life. Like an eagle who soars the sky, catch the wind, catch the wind. Your faithfulness will never let me down. I'm confident. Standing, like standing in the age of mountainside, feet with stirring, lift me up high. I was born into freedom, I was made to fly. I am strong, full of life. I am steadfast, no compromise. I lift myself to the sky. Gonna catch you in, catch you in. I am both no fear inside. Spread my wings, open my life. Uh, like an eagle, who is the sky? Gonna catch you in, gonna catch you in. Your faithfulness will never let me down. Confident, I'll see your goodness now.
of your goodness now. Your faithfulness will never let me down. I'm confident I'll see your goodness now. I know you hear my heart I'm singing out There's nothing that can stop your goodness now There's nothing that can stop your There's nothing that can stop your goodness now. There's nothing that can stop your goodness now. There's nothing that can stop your goodness now there's nothing that can stop your goodness now there's nothing that can stop your goodness now there's nothing there's nothing that can stop your goodness now there's nothing there's nothing that can stop your goodness now there's nothing, there's nothing that can stop your goodness. Abba, I belong to you. I belong to you. Ooh, Abba. I belong to you. Abba. find me you're inside me you are my reality my reality Abba I belong to you. I, 
I belong to you. Oh, I belong. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. Skin on my bone, you are closer than a song on my tongue. You taught to find me, you're inside me. You are my reality, my reality. Taught to find me, you're inside me. You are my reality, my reality. I
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste and see of sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free. My shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. God is what our hearts longs for to be overcome by presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste it and see all sweetness of love. When my heart becomes free, my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. This place and feel the atmosphere. You glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Flood this place with atmosphere glory overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence Lord Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence. It's heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me.
to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence.
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is where we want to be. It's 
stay in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just let His presence and His love just come and fill our hearts right now. It is Him that we are gathered this morning. He is our focus. He is our desire. He is the center stage. Holy Spirit, we say that we are hungry. We are hungry for more. We cannot get enough. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to just come and feel every heart right now. Feel everyone right now. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Let His presence just rest on us. Thank you, Lord. I just feel the Lord just releasing His peace right now. His shalom peace is just coming over every household right now that's watching this. That it is His peace that will guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It is His peace that transcends all understanding. Just let His peace just come and fill us right now. You cannot have peace and anxiety at the same time. You cannot have peace and depression at the same time. Just let peace be at center stage of your heart right now.
I want all of us to just put our hands on our hearts and say like, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. It is something that I don't have to work for. It is something that I freely receive right now. It is something that the world cannot give, but only you can give because you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the things that you are going to do in our life. We thank you for the things you're going to do in this service. Just thank you for the move of the Spirit that's just going to move as a word is spoken. Father, we just thank you and we praise your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. Let's give a, a hands to our worship team. All right. Write some comments. I mean, that was a really beautiful time of just really soaking in His presence, worshiping our God. All right. I'm really excited for today. I'm excited to share uh, something that the Lord has placed on my heart. And I'm going to do a little bit different from uh, probably what I usually do. So if you have your Bible, I'll definitely love for all of you to just get your Bible out and ready. All right, just get your Bible out. We, we, I'm going to go through quite, quite a few things. And when, when, when you have uh, the Bible, it's easier to keep track. All right, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, so 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 I, I, I I'm gonna uh, go into a, a topic that I really feel like God God uh, really want me to share about, and it's called prophesying into your future. Prophesying into the future, and I'm I'm gonna share you know what 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 is gonna be like. Okay, all right. All right. I mean, we 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 live in um, we, you know, in short, we have this prophetic culture, and a prophetic culture, we believe that all of us has the ability to prophesy. All of us can prophesy, and we all have a very unique flavor of of, of prophesying. You know, some see visions, some hear from God, some uh, have dreams, etc. But we all have the ability to prophesy, and at the same time, we all have the ability to hear from God. All right. So I'm going to start. Um, by starting from there first, okay? And I'm going to um, go to my notes. I'm going to write some stuff. All right, so we're going to, we, we, are, we are talking about prophecy. All right, the gift of prophecy. All right, and, and prophecy, there, there are two types that uh, we, we usually talk about. All right, number one is called foretelling. And the other one is called foretelling. All right, and, and, and these are like the, the two uh, things that we, we often talk about when we talk about prophecy. All right, but uh, I'm going to explain what's the difference between foretelling and foretelling. All right, foretelling, a lot of time we talk about seeing the future. All right, and foretelling, it talks about causing the future. All right, so, so essentially these, these are the, 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 the two branch of what prophecy is about. Either we, we you know, we, when we start to foretell, we, we start to see the future, and we see the future uh, basically through receiving, right? Receiving dreams, receiving visions, you know, hearing God's voice, uh, etc. We 
All right. But I really want to focus on something that we, we often don't talk about in church, and it's called foretelling, which means we're causing the future to happen. All right, foretelling. And one way that we cause the future to happen is we speak His Word. We speak the Word. All right, so, so that's kind of like how, 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 we, how I'm going to focus on. It's about really, you know, causing the future, speaking the future, all right, making it happen. All right, so how, how that's going to look like? Okay, I'm going to continue. All right, if we all can go to your... Um, Mark chapter 11. All right, we're going to go to Mark chapter 11 first. All right, so this, this, this morning, you know, uh, I was just kind of really praying and the Lord spoke to me very clearly about something. He said this, what you speak over yourself today is prophesying into who you'll become tomorrow. What you speak over yourself today is prophesying into who you will become tomorrow. All right, so let's go to Mark 11. All right, Mark 11, verse 14. Okay? And, and this, 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 this is about Jesus, you know, saw, saw a fig tree, right? And, and he was looking for fruits. And he, he didn't find any fruits, you know? And, and, Jesus said, and Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Right? Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. All right? So, so you know, and then we read a few verses down later. He said, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. The fig tree which you curse has withered away. All right. So, all right. Okay, I'm so let's, 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 Let's follow me on this, okay? We, I'm going to go through a few scriptures to get to a point. All right, so we have a fig. And what happened and uh, what did Jesus do? Jesus said, means Jesus speak to the fig. All right, Jesus spoke to the fig tree and it withered up. All right? Now, this is an interesting thing. If we go down... Uh, you know, to verse 23, all right? Because when, when, when the disciples marvel and say, oh, wow, Rabbi, look, you know, and they just start to teach them, teach them something, you know? So in Mark 11, let's go to verse 23, you know, uh, Jesus continued and said this, For assuredly I say to you, whoever say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he say will be done, he will have whatever he says. Okay, now, now, now we are changing. Now this is a mountain. All right, and Jesus said that. Jesus is not talking about a mountain and an analogy, and he said that whoever says. Whoever says, it's about speaking again. Whoever says, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says. Will be done, he will have whatever he says. All right, so, so just in, in one verse itself, the word says is mentioned three times. Jesus didn't say, go pray for the mountain to be removed, Jesus said, go speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. All right? The word say is mentioned three times. And I feel that sometimes we spend more time praying over our mountains than speaking to our problems. Sometimes we, we spend more time, you know, like praying, you know, oh God, remove this. But, but in this instance, God says, speak to your problems. Speak to your mountains. All right? Don't tell God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big your God is. A lot of time we come to God and say, wow, God, I'm in such a big problem right now and I need you to help me. But God's also saying, hey, speak to your problem. Tell your problem who God is. Tell your problem who is your God. Tell your problem who is your daddy. 
You know, we, we need to speak to our problem. And, you know, of, oftentimes, you know, what we say is very important. You know, I think one, one of the things that we, 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 we often do is this, when we are praying for the sick, right, sometimes. Sometimes we declare healing, right? We're like, wow, be healed in Jesus' name, you know. We command all the pain to leave, we pray. And after that, we leave the place and we say, like, ah, maybe the person's not going to be healed. Ah, maybe the person's not going to make it. Well, can, 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 can you see the contrast? We, we believe, we speak, we pray, and then the next moment we speak something else. Right? Or sometimes, like, you know, we, 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 we pray for provision, right? Yeah, man, we just declare God's going to give me a financial breakthrough, all these things. And then suddenly, like, 10 minutes later, they say, maybe God wants to make me poor. Maybe God doesn't want me to prosper. We start to speak the opposite. You see, what we speak about a matter after we pray is just important as what we pray. What we speak about a, a matter after we pray is just as important as what we pray. It is almost like you pray for something, the positive thing, and then you start to speak something negative. That's, that's not how our prayer life is supposed to be. That's, that's not how Jesus asks us to pray. You know? Okay? So, so we're talking, so, okay. Now, let's look at another thing that Jesus does. Let's go to Matthew 4. All right, Matthew 4 and uh, verse 4. All right, now we're looking at the wilderness. All right, do you know that Jesus didn't have a spiritual war warfare with the devil in the wilderness? Jesus didn't like pray hard for the devil to leave. Jesus actually speak his way out of the wilderness. He spoke his way out of the wilderness. You know? So let's look at uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said. So Jesus said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He used the truth, he used the word of God against the enemy. And he speak it. Right? And, and next thing, let's go the next verse down. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus said. He said a second time, right? And he said, it is written. We're talking about the written word of the Lord. Just remember the word written, all right? It is written. All right, and we, we, we go few verses now again, then, then it's the same thing again. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Jesus said to him. Same thing. In this story, Jesus said three times. All right? And of course, after that, the, the devil leave. All right? And, and let's, let's go to one, one more verse. Let's go to Mark 4. 39. Alright, Mark 4 tonight it is the storm, right? Alright, and Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea. He didn't pray for the storm to go, he spoke, he spoke the word to the sea. He spoke, did you see how powerful this is? That, that, that Jesus is, is displaying and demonstrating something about the power of His words. And this is something that when we start to recognize about the power of our words, our life will be different. Our life will be different. Yeah? It is about speaking. Right? So, so okay. Let, let's go to, to the next one. All right, so I hope you guys are tracking. Okay, you, you, if you go with me on this journey where we go verses by verses, okay, then, then you know, you, you, you start to see the picture that uh, what I'm, I'm trying to share. All right, now, let's go to Genesis. All right, Genesis 1.1. All right, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there 
be light, and there was light. All right, so we all, we are, I'm sure we're all very familiar with the creation story, right? The, the, the spirit was hovering over the face of the water. All right, so track in me, all right? All right, so, so, the, so the earth was without form and void, okay? Okay, so, so the earth was without form and, and void and the spirit was hovering over the face of the waters and then God said, let there be light and there was light. All right, so the spirit was hovering. The spirit only moved when the voice was released. Right? So the spirit was hovering, hovering, and at the, at the voice of God, the spirit started to move and creation started to begin. So, so God, God said, let there be light and there was light. So, so there was a voice. All right? Or in other words, God say, God spoke. And that voice was actually the word, All right? All right, are, are you guys tracking? All right, so so right now, what I've written and drawn it is about you know, in Genesis, all right, Genesis one, all right. So so the power of creation was in the words and the voice, right? The power of creation was in the word and the voice. Now let's go to the next verse. Let's go to John 1, verse 1. All right, John 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis, in the beginning, in the beginning, all right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In the beginning was the word. Jesus was also there during Genesis. He was the word. And he said this, all things were made through him, talking about Jesus, and without him, nothing was made that was made. That word is also Jesus. Right? He was the word that became flesh. Right? All right. Now, let's go to Isaiah 55, 11. All right. Isaiah 55, 11. All right. I'm, going, I'm trying to connect all the scriptures and you guys will see the connection. All right, Isaiah 55, 11, he says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I send it. All right, the word of God that is proceed out of the mouth, it will not return to him void, but it shall accomplish what he please and shall prosper. So when God speak, it will not return to him void. So when he spoke into creation, creation will happen. Creation have to happen. Because when he speaks, something will happen. Because he said that the word that was released will not return to him void. So right now in Genesis, when the spirit was hovering over the water and God spoke, he was speaking to the void. When he spoke to the void, creation started to happen and it didn't return to him back void. All right? So, so remember this part first. He spoke to the void, and the word was released, and the word did not come back to him void. Okay, we're going to that deeper later. All right? And, and let's go to Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 3. All right, Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 3. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that the things which 
are seen were not made of things which are visible. All right, this, this is connecting back to Genesis and John. All right, that, that by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the Word of God. So now the void is no longer a void. It is being framed by the Word. And that's what John once said, eh, that all things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made, that Jesus held all things together. That through Christ things were being created. And right now, the void was framed by the Word of God and it's no longer void. Amen? All right. So, so th this is really important that we need to understand. All right, I'll, I'll come back to this in, later. All right, and, and I'm going I'm to continue preaching. All right, so let, you see, one of the things this, what I'm, what I'm going to focus today is about we need to speak over ourselves. We need to speak into our future. We need to prophesy. We need to declare into our future and to ourselves. We, we cannot be passive waiting. All right. So, so a lot of times this, you know, the, 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 the last message I preached for was I talk about like, you know, God, finding God's purpose. God doesn't just have one plan. And when you mess up that one plan, you're gone. God has one purpose, but many plans to get you to that purpose. You know, and in the waiting, we, we, you know, journeying with God has transitioned. And in the midst of transition, one of the things we do is to actually speak things, call things as it is. And that is something that we have to be actively doing. We, we cannot just like, as a prophetic person, I just see, oh, in 10 years time, this is going to happen to me. No, but I also have to be actively causing the future to happen by speaking it. So I cannot just like, oh, I see a vision, I, I got a dream, God spoke to me this, but I have to position myself, I have to take action, and one of the things I take action is start declaring, start speaking. Because I speak what I believe. If I believe it, I will speak it. Amen? So, so now, so one of the things is this, when we speak, we, we are supposed to speak with a new mindset. We're supposed to speak with a new mindset. We're supposed to speak from the mind of God. We cannot think like the old because God, when He brought us into a, a, a new place, He is doing something new. And when He when He is doing something new, we cannot think like the old. The Israelite has left Egypt, but Egypt has not left them. So which means their old mindset, their Egyptian mindset in a sense, are still controlling them and still having influence over their daily decision making. And so one of the very important things that, you know, even as before we, we start to speak and we start to prophesy in the future, what are we believing? We need to renew our mind to the mind of Christ. We need to see things like how Jesus sees. All right, let's, let's go to Luke uh, chapter 5, verse 36. All right, Luke 5, 36. All right. So Jesus spoke a parable to them. He said, No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one, otherwise the old, otherwise the new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one put new, new wine into old wine skin, or else the new wine will burst the wine skin and be spilled, and the wine skin will be ruined. But new wine must put the new wine skin, and both are preserved. And no one haven't drunk old wine immediately desired new. For he said the old is better. All right. So this was a parable that Jesus spoke. All right. And 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 all the focus on the garment. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new will make a tear and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. All right. So so this this is so we need to know what 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 garment is also is Jesus talking about? In the Bible, one, one garment is mentioned quite a few times. It's called the garment of righteousness. The garment of righteousness. And Jesus is saying this. You know, Isaiah talked about that. In the book of Isaiah, he said that we are clothed in righteousness. 
So if you are clothed in righteousness, means you walk around in His righteousness. All right? We don't take a piece of the old and still walk in the new. Do you realize this? You either wear an old cloak or a new cloak. Either you wear this old cloak from the last season of fashion, you know, or you wear a new cloak that's happening and trendy now. Right? Either you wear, you know, maybe last time, you no, know, last time your jeans has no holes. Right? Then now one of the trends is, you know, uh, jeans that has hole. Holy jeans, in a sense. And hopefully they'll make you holy. No, no, Jesus is the one that only can make you holy. You know, but you see, you don't wear both, right? You cannot wear a t-shirt and another old t-shirt. You only can choose to wear one. So you're either clothed in righteousness or you're not clothed in righteousness. I cannot live in the old and still receive from the new. You see, we have to learn to recognize to put off the old man and put on the new man. When we put on the new man, that is that, that garment of righteousness. All right? And one of the things that we do is we will so-called believe that we're new creation, but that we still have old patches on us. We still think like the old. So, so we need to know we are no longer in the old covenant. We are in the new covenant. We have to think like Jesus. We have to think what's happening in the new covenant. Because if we start to mix the old covenant and the new covenant, we cannot live victoriously. In the old covenant, a lot of things need sacrifices. But in the new covenant, Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And we, when we don't recognize that, in the new covenant, we still try to sacrifice something in order to get something when Jesus said that I came to fulfill the law And we start to struggle with that. And a lot of times we are praying for something and we are expecting God to give it to us because we did something. We, we, we don't deserve anything. We, by right, we, because of our sin, we, we, we deserve that. But Jesus came and saved us. Jesus deserved mercy and love, but, but He took our sins. He took our punishment. He took what we rightfully deserve, the punishment of sins, He put it on Himself and He gave us a garment of righteousness and we receive what we don't deserve. And that what makes grace, grace. You know, unmerited favor of God. Through grace, we receive the blessing and the breakthroughs from God. All right? So if my mindset still think that the old is good, then the new one cannot fit in. It is like, you, you, you cannot put a new program in an old phone. Right? I mean, I remember my, my first phone was a Nokia, right? Nokia 8250. I still remember my model. You know, it has blue light. Back then, it was like the most trendy Nokia phone. You know, you can, you can still modify it to become louder, modify it to become brighter, like really cool stuff back then. You know? But right now, I have an iPhone. I can't put the iPhone software into the old, old Nokia phone. The all is gone. It's obsolete ready. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We all know this verse. He said, all things have passed away. Another word for pass away means dead. Right? Pass away. Someone pass away means someone is dead. All things have passed away. All things are dead. It's gone already. Our old man is dead. We cannot still wear our robe of righteousness and still have some patches of old on us and still think like the old. We have got to think like the new. You see, this, this is one, 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 one of the very beautiful verse that I like. You know, uh, Romans 11, verse 17. Romans 11, verse 17. All right, you see, and if some of the branches were broken off and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches, but if you do boast, remember that you, that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. Okay, okay. Now, this is talking about um, a gardening technique. All right. 
and it's called grafting. All right, grafting. And grafting is actually a process where you cut one plant away from the roots and attach it into another plant. And right now, this new plant that's atta attached to the, to the other plant, all right, you're cutting, not just, you're cutting the old root source and putting it into a new root source. That's what grafting is. All right, I take this plant, I cut it away from the roots, I graft it into the stem of another plant. So right now, this plant is, has a new source. This plant has a new way of being supported. This plant has a new nutrient, new root system. All right, I want to let you know that your old life is already gone. Your old roots are already cut off. Right now, you do not have the old roots. You have a new root and Jesus is the root. You have a new source and He supports you now. All right, and He said this, you know, let's go back to verse 17. Romans 11 verse 17 say that, that you become a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Right now, you know, because you are grafted into Christ, Christ is the root, Christ supports you and you are receiving nutrients, you are receiving blessing, you are receiving breakthrough, not because of your own effort but because you were grafted in. That's a new source. 2 Peter 1.4 He said that by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature because we are grafted in. Our old source is gone. We're in a new source. That's why we can become the partakers of the divine nature. We have a new nature now because we have a new root system. The old root system is no longer valid. Right now, we are connected to a new root system that will give us nutrients and give us things that we need to thrive. You are cut off from the influence of your past root. Your past root has no more power. You are cut off. You now get a new nature. You are now a partaker of a divine nature of Christ. That, that's who you are right now. That's your source. All right? And, and, and you see, we need to remind ourselves that we are clothed in righteousness now. We cannot really patch it a portion of old and new and mix it together and we think that's trendy. <laughs> Alright, that's not trendy. Living in between the old and the new covenant, living in between the old mindset and new mindset, that is not trendy. That will cost you. We cannot afford to do that. Alright, because when, 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 we, when we understand where we belong, then we know what to speak. We know what to declare. We know what to prophesy. Because we cannot say contrary to what God is saying. We got to start speaking and saying what God is saying about me and the people around me. God says that I am His beloved. But God also say, this brother and sister that's beside me is also God's beloved. So we got to speak and we got to see and we got to declare what God is saying over us. It's not just about myself, but also the people around us. Can you imagine you, 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 you maybe in office and your colleague make a mistake and you'll be like, man, this person is so dumb. But that's not what God is speaking over your colleague. Or maybe your kid, you know, spill the milk and be like, man, this kid is so clumsy. But that is not what God is speaking over your kid. Or same thing. When, 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 when maybe you fail, fail uh, examination or something like that, then you start to tell yourself, oh man, I am so stupid. But that is not what God is speaking over you. You see, we got to learn and recognize to speak life because your destiny is voice activated. That when you start to declare, when you start to speak, when you start to prophesy into who you are to become and into your destiny, things going to happen. Things are going to happen. You know, Romans 4.17, 4.17, all right, Romans 4.17, it talks about this, you know, gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. That is what we're going to talk about today, that we're going to speak, we're going to speak, we're going to prophesy and call those things which do not exist as though they did. Because that's faith. That is faith. You know, we need to speak we need to speak to the void in our life. All right, I'm going to go back to, to what, what I had drawn earlier on. All right, remember in Genesis, 
You know, I, I say that God spoke to the void and creation started to happen. Let's be honest, there are, in our life, there are some areas of life that may seem void. Maybe your bank account looks a bit void. Maybe your relations looks a bit void. You know, but we are, to be like God, we speak the word. We prophesy into our situation. We declare truth into those situations. All right, we need to, maybe our situation seems empty, seems chaotic, but we need to speak in those situations. We need to take the written word into the spoken realm to release the faith. All right, we got to see something happen. We got to see our problems and we're going to turn it into, into something that God can use. That when we speak, that chaos, that problem will, be, will, will partner with God's creative power. Because when God, in Genesis, God keeps saying, when He spoke, let it be light, there'll be light. When He created day one, day two, day three, He keeps saying this, and it is good. And it was good. It is good. It is good. Everything that He spoke, everything that He created was good. We need to come to that place that when we have a situation in life, we're going to speak. We're going to prophesy. We're going to decline. And we're going to keep doing it and we're going to have faith doing it. We're going to call those things as though they are already and we're going to come to that place and say that when that breakthrough comes, we say that it is good. It is good. When we see that breakthrough, we'll be like, man, this is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. We, we need to speak to this. All right. So, so you see, God does not lie, right? We know in Him is truth, right? Jesus came, came in full of truth and grace. He is full of truth. God does not lie. He cannot lie, actually. That is His nature, all right? He always speaks the truth. And you see, when God comes and tells you, wow, you can do it, but we don't believe it. But He's not lying. When, when God comes to and says that you can do it, He is not lying, but we don't believe it. When He says that, Hey, it's going to happen, but we don't believe it. I am who God say I am, not my situation, not my feelings. If God say that He's going to come through for me to, so that there will be a breakthrough, I will believe it. If God say I'm an overcomer, I'm going to believe it. If God say I'm holy and pure and righteous, I'm going to believe it. I am going to believe what the Word say. I'm going to believe what He says. You see, a lot of times, we look forward, you know, to like the next season, all right, without equipping and preparing ourselves, right? We want a promotion without effort, all right? You see, David was fighting lions and bears before Goliath. He was already worshipping God in the private before he worshipped God in the public. He was doing something at the back end to prepare himself to step to the next level of promotion, and I like to propose one of the most powerful things that we can do in the waiting for our next season in transition is to start speaking God's word over ourselves. It's to start speaking God's word over ourselves. All right, so I'm going to write something new. All right, let's go to Proverbs 18.21. All right, most of you know Proverbs 18.21. All right, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay? All right, so, so our tongue has its power. All right, it, it can create life or death. All right, so 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 uh, 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 like our tongue has a power to create life or death. All right, life and, and both are fruits. So so that there's a fruit of life or, and or, or like a fruit of death, right? So when when so our tongue actually has a creative force to create. All right, so, so our tongue has this creative force to create. Just like how in Genesis, God created. 
okay? But death actually has a destructive force. And that destructive force is to tear down. So as we steward our tongue, you know, James also talked about, you know, uh, one of the most powerful things on a ship is a rudder. So the tongue is like a rudder. It can steer our life. It can steer our life. So how we speak, what we speak over ourselves, what we speak over other people, what we speak over situation is very important because what we speak, it will either, number one, release a creative force to create the breakthroughs you want to see, or number two, release a destructive force that will tear things down. It will tear people down. That is the power of the tongue. All right? And, and this is something that when we know, then we will steward our tongue. All right? Now, let's go back to uh, Hebrews 11.1.3. Okay? Let's go to Hebrews 11.1.3. All right, I'm going to write something new on. All right, so Hebrews 11, 1, 3. Okay, so by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. All right, remember I, I talked about early on in Genesis, right? When God spoke the word and in the beginning, the word was God and was with God. All right, when spoke the word and through him, all things were made. When, we, when the word was spoken, the word was framed, right? So the void was framed and became something. All right, so, so, so Hebrews uh, 11, we talk about the words were framed by the word of God. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give an illustration. All right, so, so, so the world was framed, all right? So imagine with me, all right, a picture frame. So the world was like framed by the word of God. Things were held through Christ, okay? And you see, well, so, so if, the, if the word of God can frame the world, which means the word of God also frame our future. The word of God also frame our destiny. The word of God also frame the reality that we're walking in daily, all right? Right. So, so how the Word of God framed the, framed the world is also how the Word of God it is going to frame the reality that we walk in. The daily things that we do. All right. And okay, this is a very interesting. The word frame in Hebrews 11, um, 3, the word frame, the Greek word is called katatizo. Katatizo. Okay. And the word katatizo has this very interesting meaning. It means to complete, put an order, or even restore. Okay? All right. So, so when God framed the word, he complete the word. In that sense, okay? Frame, katatizo, which also means complete. Okay? Now, let's go to another verse while keeping track, okay? Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word of God is so that the man of God will be Complete. The word will complete just as God, the word of God framed the future, complete the future. Sorry, the world. So the word of God will complete us. So you see, the, the written word, the scriptures, it is one of the, one of the important things is that it completes us. It completes us just as how when the word was spoken, 
the world was framed, katatizo, complete. So when we speak things into our situation, into ourselves, into our, 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 the people around us, we are also framing, which is katatizo, we are framing, we are completing people's, people's reality. Amen? We are doing, there's something really powerful about this. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's go in depth into 2 Corinthians 4.13. All right, I'm going to write something new. 2 Corinthians 4.13. All right, he said this, And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, remember, I talk about what is written, all right, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. All right, Paul is talking about something. And he said, since we have the same spirit of faith, okay. All right, same spirit of faith. Who is he talking about? All right, he said, and he said, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke according to what is written. All right. So according to the written word, this person believed it and he spoke. And this person he's referring to was in Psalms 116, he was talking about David. And David actually shared the same spirit of faith that we have. All right, and, and then let's move on. He said, like, therefore, we also believe and therefore speak. So my question today is, do you believe the written word of God and therefore you speak what has been written about you? Because we do have the same spirit of faith like David because David believed and he spoke. And Paul is saying, therefore, because we also believe what was written in the Word, and we spoke. We spoke. We got to start speaking what God is speaking. We got to start declaring what God is declaring over us. All right? And we got to start saying what God says about you and the people around you. That is the reality. Sometimes it's like, oh, my house is so chaotic, but what are you declaring and saying at home? Maybe you're saying like, man, my husband is so lazy. My kids are so clumsy. My maid is very useless. And then you are declaring and speaking into that situation. That's why you live in that reality. You know, that's why you live in that reality. You live into what you speak, what you create, what you frame. All right, so let's, okay, let me give, give an analogy. All right, we talk about framing, right? So, so there are two. All right, so, so for one, okay, let's, let's talk about maybe we speak over a kid, right? Maybe, you know, in, in one, we frame the kids with powerful words such as, you are powerful. Right? You're powerful, uh, you are amazing. All right, you're amazing, you are blessed, you are special. All right, you are anointed. So as you see, like what I've written, you see the frame is like a picture frame and with your kid in the middle. So when you, so what you speak, you're framing a reality that your child can walk into. You're framing a reality that your child can live in and that is, wow, you are powerful, you are blessed, you are special, you're amazing, you're anointed. All right? But what if it's the opposite? The opposite will be like, you know, I, I love Patrick always say this, you are useless, you are hopeless, you are worthless. <laughs> right?
right? You are stupid. You are dumb. And, and, and you see, if you look at, look at a comparison of what, what I have written and drawn, like which reality would you want your child or even yourself to live in? What frame do you want to have for your future? All right, if we keep telling a child that, wow, he's stupid or cannot make it, he will step into that reality. But if you child, tell a child that, wow, you're wanted, you're beloved, you're special, you're anointed, that becomes the reality that they live in. Because, you see, of course, then that's how you're saying, oh, but my parents don't speak all these things to me. But you can speak over yourself. The context of asking your parents to speak, I think that's power of parents declaring and prophesying into their, their kid. But at the same time, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, Pastor Clement want my father and mother to speak over. No, no, you can speak over yourself. You can speak over yourself. That, that's a key thing. This is, this is the sermon about today that we take ownership, we take authority, and we start to speak over ourselves. We got a tongue. You don't need other people's tongue. You got your tongue. And we can speak into our life daily. Every day you look at in, in the mirror, right? Comb hair, you know, put makeup. We be like, man, you are so anointed. You are so righteous. You are so handsome. You are so pretty. You are so powerful. Start speaking and declaring and prophesying over yourself into what was written about you. you no, know, Proverbs 30, uh, verse 6, 36, Proverbs. He said this, Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. So if you are saying something that is, that is contrary to what God is saying. You are a liar. Why? Because God speaks the truth. If God says you are powerful and you say, I'm not powerful, you're lying. If God says you're anointed and you say, I'm not anointed, you're lying. If God says that you are an overcomer, you are a breaker, that is an anointing of life, and say, I'm not like any of you say, you are lying. Because God speaks the truth because he is truth himself. When he speaks, that's the truth. And anything that is contrary to what he has spoken or written about you means you're lying. You're not, you're not lying to God, you're lying to yourself. We need to break all those lies that we've spoken over ourselves that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And we start to declare that I am, I am, I am. I am. Do not add lies to the truth. Or sometimes we put condition to the truth. Right? And we, 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 we say like, I'm powerful, ah, if only I do this, do that. We put condition, no, you are powerful, whether you feel it or not, feel it. Because it is not. We need to live in truth. Truth has, has no feelings one. Truth is truth. Truth means that right now, where I am, where, where Clement is standing, I'm already powerful. Without doing anything, I'm already powerful, I'm already righteous, I'm already anointed, I'm already holy, I'm already pure. I am the head, not the tail. I am already I am ready. It's not about how I feel. It's like, I am the head, not the tail. But no. No, I don't feel. I feel like the tail today. I don't feel like the head. I feel like the tail. I don't feel righteous today. I don't feel. I tell you, it's not about your feeling. Leave your feeling at the door. We are called to live by faith and in truth, not by feelings. Feelings will go up and down. Some days you are happy. Some days you are, you are sad. And, and when you are in a good mood, you, you, you will believe the truth easily. So, so basically, your identity will go up and down if you base your identity based on feelings. But truth is always constant. Truth is like a straight line. It's always constant. Whether you feel or not feel, it is still the truth. Whether I feel it or not, God still loves me and that's the truth. It's not like, wow, God never sent me a gemstone very long already. Ah, never see angels for very long. Oh, don't have gold dust. I mean, like, we, we start to put all these funny requests and we start to say, because I don't feel it, because I don't see certain signs, that's why God doesn't love me. But that's because you base God's love on conditional, but God's already demonstrated His love on the cross. And that's the truth. He already died for you. So we cannot afford to live in feelings that go up and down and we start to like, oh, I don't feel this, I don't feel No, you are. I am the head, not the tail. Whether you feel like the tail today or not, you're still the head. Amen? It is not feelings. It's the truth. You know? And, and we need to start declaring truth of I am. I'm beloved. I am. You see, the, like, okay, let me write something new. All 
All right. So, so, so remember earlier on, I talked about the, the garment of righteousness don't mix the old and the new. All right. So the old me, the focus was I was. But the new me, where I'm clothed in righteousness, where I am part of the new covenant, it is about I am. I am. I was clumsy. I was lousy. I was bad. I was naughty. But that was, the was was in the past. That was the old man. That old man of me has already died. Right now, I am new. I'm a new creation. I am. And because I am a new creation, I walk in the newness of life. I walk in a new identity. And these are some things we should start saying over ourselves. I am the beloved. I am. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm free. I am. I'm righteous. I'm the light. I'm the sword. I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm blessed, I'm anointed, I'm filled with His grace, I am chosen, I'm special. That's what 1 Peter 2.9 say. 1 Peter 2.9 say, you are a chosen generation. Come on, you are chosen. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people. So I'm going to turn that verse and start to declare over myself that I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I am His special people. I am. Whatever that you think, you feel, those old identity, it was in the past. It was in the past. Oh, I was very naughty. Yeah, that was in the past. I still think that was in the past. Do you know... What does old man mean? It means it's, it's old, absolute, dead Ready? We talk about, right? Old things have passed with dead. Have you seen someone who is dead come out of the grace and rob a bank? That's pr- maybe in a movie, you know? But I read, no, because the old man is already dead. He has no power, but we love to hang out with the old man and talk to the old man. We're supposed to talk to Jesus, not talk to the old man. Let the dead be dead. Don't disturb it. Amen? And, and, and of course, understand, we, we, we are also in this journey, you know, of, of understanding our identity. You see, when, when a kid is born into the world, right, one of the things that this kid is doing is they are learning his or her identity. And, and you know, a kid grow up, they will explore the surrounding. They will receive uh, words and information that was spoken over them, you know? So some, some parents are like, wow, that's amazing, that's powerful. You're doing a great job, come on, you know? So, so through these things, the good things, the bad things, the surroundings, it all comes together and form an identity. So if there are more negative things than positive things, you, the kid will most likely grow up more negative. Yeah, my mom said I cannot make it, so I cannot make it lah. Yeah, uh, my dad say. I will always fail one. So okay, la, I'll prove him right. La. I'll always fail. La. Right? So, so, so you see, the thing is, life is in the death, sorry, life, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Which means what we speak, we have this creative force to create a new reality. Right? So, sounds like Marvel right now, the reality stone, right? <laughs> create a new reality. Or uh, uh, we speak death and, and then it becomes a destructive force that will tear down things. What are we speaking over people, over ourselves, to create the reality that we want to, to see? You see, the Bible is full of words that, that are our identity, and we are in this journey to continue to, to learn more about ourselves. You know? It's an ongoing journey. So I'm saying, so as a, as a baby is born to this world, they take all the surrounding different factors and, and it form an identity. Whether they will be adventurous, they are a risk taker, etc. It all has a factor of what is spoken over them because it's being framed. So the same thing as we are born again, 
right? As we are born again, which means it's a new birth, and the word born again means born from above, which means right now we have a new life, and we need to start on this new journey of discovering our new identity. So maybe you come from a broken family where your parents don't believe you, where your parents look down on you, where your parents say negative things. But I tell you, when you are born again, you are born from above. You have a new life. You have a new identity. Those were you. Those were the old things. You, you were stupid. You were incapable. But right now, because you are grafted into Christ, you have a new source that new source gives you that grace and a power to do things that you've never done before. It will empower you. That's our new identity. So as we are born again, we, are also, we also embark on this new journey of discovering our new identity. Do you understand who you are? Do you understand what the written word has spoken over you? Because if we don't know, that will be very challenging. All right, let's continue. All right, I'm done with the notes already. All right, so, so, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15.10. All right, 1 Corinthians 15.10. Paul said this, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace towards me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not. I, but the grace of God, which was with me. All right. Wow. Okay, so if you if you seen, right, one of the words that keep appearing in this verse is the word grace. The grace of God, by the grace of God, Paul is who he is based on the grace of God. And it was this grace that was towards him, not in vain. And it is this grace that was with him. And I tell you, that grace is also with us. Paul is saying this, by the grace of God, I am what I am. You need to know, before he was Paul the apostle, he was Saul, and he was a Saul the murderer of Christian. He was a murderer, like a mass murderer in a sense. He was persecuting Christian. And he became an apostle, of course, because of the encounter and, and the Lord appeared before him. But my, my point is this, he's saying this, by the grace of God, that was my old life. It's gone, it's dead, it's cut off, I'm now, you know, Grafted, I have a new life, I have a new energy, and it is by His grace I am what I am. And you will frustrate the grace of God when you start to say something that's not about you. I am not a son, I'm not anointed, I'm not this, I'm not that. You are frustrating the grace. We cannot afford to speak something about ourselves that God is not. I say it one more time. We cannot afford to speak something about ourselves that God is not speaking. Because when you are when when you keep what you speak, remember I say what you speak, you are creating a reality. And a lot of times, the false reality is actually lies, and lies actually lock you up or box you up into that reality you're in. But when you start to speak the written word, when you start to speak the truth, when you start to speak the word, you break out the box. You break out the box. You're not supposed to live with limitation. You're not supposed to live in a box that is framed by lies and word that God is not speaking. It's like, I'm not anointed. I'm not anointed. Then you live your life thinking you're not anointed and you never do anything, anything great for the kingdom of God because you think you're not anointed and you box yourself up. We need to break that box today that whatever things that you might be speaking over yourself, it has to end today. Anything they are speaking over your, you have been speaking over yourself that is contrary to what God is saying, we need to stop speaking. And I feel like this is something we're going to do. We're going to break off those lies. We're going to break off those statements. We're going to break off any assumption that we might have about ourselves that is contrary to what God is speaking. Amen. I'm going to end with one last verse. Ephesians 4.29. Alright, Ephesians 4.29. He said, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart 
grace to the hearer. It may impart grace to the hearer. All right, so, so, so this is something very powerful. Your words actually release grace to those who are hearing, including yourself. When you speak, when you prophesy, when you declare over yourself, you are releasing grace over yourself. And we, we often know grace as an unmerited favor of God, which is true, but grace is also the operational power of God. Grace allows you to do what you cannot do before you got the grace. So when you, when you are declaring, speaking, prophesying into yourself and into your future, you know, you are releasing grace. You're releasing grace. And as you hear what you're speaking, you are re- you're, you're, you're receiving, you're releasing grace, also receiving the grace. You see, when I speak to the ki- when I speak to a kid, you know, like, man, you are amazing, you are powerful. What I'm doing is I'm not just framing the future, but I'm also releasing grace that when he hears it, he partners with the word. He partners with the word. And remember, when, when I'm speaking, what was written, God's words that proceed out of his mouth will go to a void and will not return to him void because it takes effect and it prosper in the things that it does. When I come to, come to a kid and he is like, maybe, man, he has low self-esteem or what, I, I'm going to start to speak life. I'm going to start to speak life that you are powerful, you are amazing, you are wanted, you are loved. And what I'm doing is I'm speaking to those void that is inside him. And the word, which is the written word of God, that he is the beloved, as it goes into the void, it starts to fill up the void, it starts to frame a new perspective and a new reality. And that is what we're doing with ourselves. Maybe there are certain voids that we could ask God, God, what, what, are we, what are we believing wrongly? What I, am I believing, believing wrongly? Maybe you believe that, you know, you're not special enough. You know, then, then that might be a void. Because you think you're not special enough, you think small yourself, that is a void. I'm, I'm going to start to declaring, I'm going to start to prophesy, I'm going to start to speak to myself that I am His special people, I am His beloved, I am important, I am powerful. I'm going to start to declare and speak into that void of mine so that that void of mine will no longer be voided and that void will become a new reality, which is the truth, which is the word. We need to start planting seeds of truth into those void. And we need, to, we need to let those void not stay empty, but be filled with promises, be filled with hope, be filled with expectation, be filled with truth. What are you speaking over yourself today? What are you prophesying about your future today? What are you declaring over your situation today? I just want to encourage everyone that your words are more powerful than you are. They are actually, I mean, they, they, they are, this is more like a longer message if I couldn't start to show some science video. But one interesting thing is, is that, you know, like our words also carry a, a, a frequency and a vibration. And, and water has memory and water takes shape. You know, I got this really interesting video about that. <clears throat> and interesting, the human body is made of mostly water, right? I think about 70%. And when you're declaring yourself, do you know the, the water molecules, when, when, they, when they come in contact with sound, they, they change shapes. They change shapes based on what sounds. And I know that's, and also there's experiment, some of you might know, that, that, that this experiment that people do uh, with two plants. You know, one plant, they start to speak like, man, I love you, you're a beautiful plant. Wow, you have green leaf, you're so nice. And the other plant, they start to declare negative words like, man, you are dumb, you're stupid, you're a lousy plant, you're an ugly plant, you're a useless plant, you're a worthless plant, you're a hopeless plant, all the, all the negative words. And after like, you know, after a while, they record it. The, the plant... That, that receive the good words, they thrive. They still become green. But the other plant that receive all the negative words, they start to wither. They start to, start to crumble down. And, and that is what I mentioned earlier, like how Jesus spoke to the fig tree. It started to wither. So our words really carry life or death 
And if you want to live a life, you know, full of, full of breakthroughs, full of expectation, that's thriving, we have to speak life. We cannot afford to speak negative things, things over ourselves. Wow, I cannot. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I'm not this. I'm not that. You know, we, we, we have to, to, to really start to intentionally speak life. One way to change our reality and one and word is to change the way we speak. Change the way we speak. So I'm going to speak, Pastor Patrick. You are the best friend. You're the most gener- generous man I know. I'm going to start to declare. I'm going to start to speak. You're the most loving person I know. You're the most patient person I know. Pastor Patrick, you are always there for people. You know, so you see, when I speak all these things, I'm also declaring, I'm also prophesying, and also speaking and creating a reality. You know, maybe Pastor Patrick don't think he's very generous, but I keep saying, wow, you're very generous, you're very generous. And one day, wow, he start to buy me a meal every day for one week. It's like, man, I'm, I'm generous. Yeah, man, Pastor Clemson, I'm generous, man. <laughs> you see, what, <laughs> what, what I speak will create, will frame his reality. You know? What, what I speak will, will frame the reality. So it, it, it happened with maybe our friends, our close friends, our family members, our kids. You know? Like, let's be very intentional with using our words. That we use our words to build up, not to tear down. That we use our words to create life and not to to destroy people. Because if you know, (coughs) this is off script already, but but if you know, sometimes we are hurt by very negative words that people spoke over us. And we actually still carry a hurt, a pain, or a grudge or even an offense. Because destructive words, negative words, does cut people to the heart and to the soul. And there are sometimes still words that are hurtful, painful, that cut us and are still festering in us. And one way to break that off is to speak and declare the opposite. Maybe when... when, when Oh, okay, this is a true example. I remember when I was in school, one of my, uh, my English teacher, you know, came to me. I remember I handed in an assignment. Then my, oh, that was, that was in, uh, the English uh, lecturer came, came to me and gave me back my assignment and said that, wow, your grammar is atrocious. <laughs> and I still remember that. I was like, when I heard that, I felt my heart shattered. It was painful. It was degrading. It was damaging, you know? And, and one thing I did is I started declaring, man, I'm a preacher. I can preach. I can, I can do well in public speaking. I start to speak the opposite of a damage that has been done years ago. And I flip it around. I start to prophesy. I start to decline. I start to frame a new reality that I can walk in. So I want to encourage as I end this message that today, may we spend some time with the Lord and ask God, is that any void that you want us to speak into our life and create life in it. Number two, is there maybe any lingering pain, trauma, offense, or even bitterness that is still lingering in our heart because of someone spoken over us? And we're going to declare, prophesy, and speak the opposite in that. And as we do these two things, I just believe the Lord is going to come in and fill our hearts, heal our hearts, and change our perspective So let's just close our eyes. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you that that you are truth and what you are speaking over us is the truth. And we say that today, we no longer want to add anything onto your word. We no longer want to lie to ourselves about who you call us to be. If you say that I'm powerful, I am powerful. If you say I'm anointed, I am anointed. If you say I'm courageous, I am courageous. I'm no longer running away from the truth that is spoken over me. I'm no longer going to add condition or lie to myself about what you've spoken over me today. I am who I am by the grace of God. I am who you say I am. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm bold. I'm courageous. I'm powerful. 
I'm filled by your grace. I am your beloved. I am, I am, I am who you say I am. And Father, I pray over everyone that as we dwell deeper into your word, that we discover a greater understanding and clarity of what you say over us. And as we read the Bible, we will say, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. So Father, we just release your grace and breakthrough over everyone that's watching right now. That you break off any negative word that people have spoken over them. That you start to use them to speak into those void. And as they speak, it will not return to them void. And it will create a new reality for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Pastor Clement, for that amazing word. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. Wow. So um, we want to we want to just uh, collect the offering right now, and if, uh, if if you are not part of Soak, please keep your tithe to uh, your local church. But you are free to um, to just uh, sow into our ministry, uh, love and love a love offering. Uh, we are going to we are going to just believe that as we sow uh, with a heart of thanksgiving that God blesses back, and we can never outgive God, yeah. And 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 so um, yeah, you can pay through uh, through the QR code if you are in Singapore, and and if you are from overseas, you can pay through the uh, UEN number. All right. So let's let's pray. Let's pray for the offering. Father God, we thank you that that you are always speaking good words over us. Even in times that we fail to speak good words over ourselves, you are constantly speaking good words over us. And so we open our heart to your your word and to receive y- your seed of truth into our hearts. Even, even as we've heard uh, your words spoken by, by uh, Pastor Clement uh, this morning, we receive that word into our hearts, oh God. That, that is your word that shapes who we are. And, and Lord, even as we sow uh, into, in, into your work into your ministry, into your house, that we give with a heart of thanksgiving, we give with a heart of praise, we give a heart uh, knowing, having faith of, uh, that breakthrough will come at the right time when we are ready. And even as we give, we are positioning our hearts to be ready and we are positioning our lives for breakthrough. So we give with with thanksgiving, we give with joy, we give with expectation, we give with faith, knowing that you are the God who protects and provides. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so we, we just have a, f- uh, a, a few announcements. Um, this Wednesday is our regular soak living room. Uh, and and we are on this topic called uh, living out sonship. That we are all sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are we, we are sons and daughters of the King, and that makes you and I prince and princesses. That we are royalty, and and part of uh, part of this process is to realize and awaken into our royal identity. And, and many times we, we, we feel like paupers, we live like paupers uh, be, be, because we, we, are, we are not connected with who we really are. We, are, we, we don't have a sense of, of, of who we are really are in Him. And, and so living out sonship is, is really this, this uh, process of 
awakening to our identity and then living it out. And, and so please join us, uh, uh, Soak Living Room, this Wednesday, 7.30. It will be a powerful time. We had two incredible sessions and we're going to just go deeper this Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday, I will be preaching and, and um, the sermon on my title is Shaping, <laughs> Shaping Your World with Your Words. And, um, and, and Pastor Clement has really laid an incredible uh, foundation uh, today. Yeah, about that, I'm just going to carry on from, from what he has preached and taught. And, 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 and we, will, we, will just, uh, we, it, we will just continue to, to, to see what the Word has to say about the power of his spoken word through your spoken word. All right? Praise the Lord.